Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to today's vlog. So, two things going on today. Number one, it's Grandma's birthday. Um, yeah, hold on, baby. I'll open it. So, number one, it's Grandma's birthday. Number two, we really want these popsicles to be open right now. <laughs> what do you want? A big. What do you mean open? A big. Open what? Open what? Open popsicles? Open popsicles. Okay. There you go. All right. All better. Oh, you, you broke it. Okay, and the other thing that we have going on is me and Kadell are going to the pool because it's very, very hot and we're not going to celebrate until a little bit later. But I want to see if I can try to teach Kadell to put his face under the water, which he's been working on and he will tolerate that. Um, he's not like crazy about it, but he'll do it. It's not that big of a deal. But... He has never worn like goggles or a mask before to go under the water. And I think if, if he could just do it once, I think as much as he loves water and swimming, I think he would love it. I think he would just totally dig the concept of, you know, being able to see underwater and dive for things and stuff like that. So I kind of have a little bit of faith because you know, out of nowhere, he's just tolerating a helmet, a bicycle helmet all of a sudden, which is something he's never been able to do before. So maybe we can do some goggles or like a face mask, but we'll just try it and see. Are you ready? Hey, are you ready? Let's go. Let's go to the pool. Come on. Let's go to the pool, Bubba. Okay, come on, baby. Let's go. music <laughs> Goofball. okay so we really didn't have a whole lot of luck with the mask he just wasn't feeling it and I don't blame him I think it's gonna take some getting used to but we are gonna go back for another try with a dive toy and see if maybe he'll play with the toy without a mask, just to get him used to being submerged underwater, you know? Oh, it's so funny. 
are you thinking about? Tickles? Are you thinking about tickles? Hello. Tickle, 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 tickle. go as planned either I mean he did fine um, he enjoyed it but he kept cheating and trying to pick it up with his foot um, he just really doesn't like getting his head completely submerged in the water which you know I understand that takes some getting used to and um, he likes to swim but he kind of just likes to doggy paddle and float so you know it's just a skill we're gonna have to work on but I think it'd be really cool to teach him to dive first stuff so and to tolerate a mass because it's fun, you know, and I think he would enjoy it once he realized he enjoyed it. But, um, but yeah, so we've got all summer to work on it and I'm sure by the end of the summer we'll, we'll be getting there. That kind of close, maybe we don't do that. Oh, can you do? Just threw it in the water. Oh, bye bye. Okay, Dale. All right, where's our bike? There it is. The big tandem. The big blue bike. We love our bike. Helmet? Oh, good job. You're putting the cup in the cup holder. I didn't know you knew where that was. Here, baby. We have to put the lid on, though. Uh, uh, because you always want to take the lids off for some reason. I don't know why that's a thing, but it is a thing. Okay. All right, babe, come put your helmet on. Here. You're getting really good at wearing your helmet. 
There you go. You gotta buckle it though. You gotta, you gotta buckle it. Come on, here, you hold the camera. You hold the, you hold, oh, you gonna do it? Okay. Look at you go, big boy. There you go, good job. All right, you ready? Let's go, let's go home. Let's go to grandma's. Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know, me and Kidel got this sweet tandem bike from a neighbor because they had it sitting outside for the trash to pick up. And we were like, uh, what's wrong with it? Pretty much nothing was wrong with it. It just needed new, um, not even new tires, just new tubes. So we were like, yeah, we'll take that off your hands. And we have been enjoying it ever since. It's a great bike and it's perfect for me and Kidel. It's got gears and everything. It is sweet. You ready back there? All right, let's go. Let's go. Bye bye, pool. See you next time. Wee! You got two hands and two feet. Wee! Wee! Lily. Okay, so we are back from the pool. We're kind of just like, you know, getting cleaned up, getting ready to do something for um, grandma's birthday. I don't know, we're probably just gonna get some takeout or something like that and just kind of have a little small family celebration. But um, I was gonna talk to you guys about Kadel's swimming. So I get asked a lot of questions about you know, how did you teach Kato to swim? How were you able to master that skill? And to be honest with you guys, I think that for us, it came natural for Kato. Kato was literally swimming. I'm not going to say before he was walking, but it was right around the same time that he started walking. So he was um, like one one years old before he even turned two he was swimming first of all kato has no physical limitations i mean for those of you guys who watch our vlogs you know that kato is a climber and a runner and he's just constantly on the go and he's very physically active and physically fit and coordinated so that's already in our favor um but i feel like with autism you know there's so many barriers and one of the biggest things is a language barrier. Kato is minimally verbal. And so sometimes when we're trying to teach him a, a skill or we're trying to get a point or a lesson across to him, it seems like you have to sit there and think, well, how am I going to teach him this? How am I going to explain this to him and help him to be able to understand it? And the thing with swimming was that I really didn't have to. Honestly, he just had such a um, such a passion and such a motivation to want to swim that I didn't really have to do that much. You know, when he was little, I put the water wings on him and he hated those things. He absolutely hated it. So I took one off, you know, just to see kind of how he'd do and it almost just made him even more mad. So I just said, screw it, whatever. I'm gonna take both of them off and we'll see how he does. And he kind of bobbled, you know, there for a minute, but then it was like, all right, well, he's swimming now. He just kind of picked up on it, honestly. And for a lot of kids, I know the water is a sensory aversion. And, you know, I don't really have any advice for that because that was never an issue for us. So it was never something that we had to figure out or work through. Now, as you saw in today's video earlier, Kato does not like to put his face in the water. I don't know if that is maybe a little sensory aversion or just Kato's personal preference or he just doesn't like it. So that is something that we are just going to slowly keep working on and slowly introduce. And, you know, that would be really, I guess, the only advice that I have for, you know, parents with kids on the spectrum is just be patient make it as positive of an experience as possible. Whatever motivates your child, whatever makes your child happy, just try to introduce that around water so that, you know, water is a positive experience for them. Um, 
you know, you don't want them to be fearful of water. You want them to, you know, be brave and embrace it and learn that water is fun and water is playful. And, you know, um, the more positive experience they have with water, I think the more they'll be motivated to learn to swim. You know, I will say for autism especially, I feel like learning to swim is a safety thing because we live in Florida, so there's a lot of lakes and a lot of rivers and a lot of retention ponds and just things like that um, around our homes. So it's a safety thing, you know? If Cato were to run away, which, you know, he has one time in the past and it was terrifying, it was in the middle of the night, and had he not known how to swim, I think that would have been like a huge fear. You know, my, my parents live like a quarter of a mile away from a giant lake. So I think it is very important for kids on the spectrum to learn how to swim unless like you live in a desert and it's not a, it's not a thing. But if you do live around water, you know, for kids on the spectrum or just young kids in general, I think it's really important to teach them how to swim at an early age and just make it positive and fun and happy. So I guess that's it on my end. Um, if you guys have any other questions or anything you want me to talk about in future vlogs, let me know. But I appreciate y'all hanging out with us. We had so much fun at the pool today. And just as always, thank you for your support. And we'll see you next vlog. All right, have a good day. Bye. Happy birthday to you. Ooh.